Praise the Lord, everybody. I want to thank you all for being with us this evening. We're uh, excited uh, to be v Facebook via live. And if you like this page, make, the, make sure that you um, like it. And if you uh, we pray that you would share it with uh, your friends and your loved ones. We're just blessed of the Lord and uh, glad to be able to bring uh, to you the word of God through this medium, through this vehicle called uh, Facebook Live, as well as to bring this uh, Bible study and prayer meeting to uh, you also by way of YouTube. Make sure you like this page and make sure you share this page with your family and with your friends. Praise the Lord, everybody. We welcome you tonight uh, to our weekly uh, prayer meeting and Bible study. We're excited to be uh, with you uh, via Facebook uh, Live and uh, immediately following will be uh, on YouTube Live. Make sure that you like this page and make sure that you share this page with your family and your loved ones. We want to make sure that you stay safe, that you stay healthy, that you stay home, uh, but most important, that you stay strong in your faith and you're confident uh, that you know that God is still yet working even in these difficult times. I believe that we serve a God that is yet working behind the scenes and that he's in control of this pandemic that we're dealing with right now. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We know that and we receive that and we believe that in the Lord. We also uh, want you to not miss out on this opportunity that we have uh, in the midst of everything that is going on, in the midst of the shelter in place, make sure that you don't step back from ministry. Make sure that you uh, look at new ways to minister. Make sure that you look at uh, new opportunities and possibilities that, that we have in reaching uh, the masses with the word of God in time like these. The church, my brothers and sisters, was built for times like these. The church is equipped handle uh, these issues that is plaguing uh, our globe today and plaguing us who uh, that are yet a part of the body of Christ. Don't step back from ministering. Step forward. Call somebody up. Tell them that you love them uh, in the Lord. Uh, ask if they need anything. See if they need anything, especially to our elders and our seniors. And then thirdly, whisper a short word of prayer for them for their home, uh, for their family, for everything that is connected to them. And when you do that, the church can move forward. The church can be a witness. The church can be a testimony to how great and how awesome our God is. And we know that you're covered by the blood. Before we get into our Bible study lesson, let us just seek a word of prayer. Gracious God and our Father, Lord, how we bless you, God, and thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you, God, that you are everything we need you to be, God. Whatever we're going through, God, we know that you're able to meet our needs according to all of your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. We call on you, God, tonight. We call on you, God, in this situation that we're dealing with, God, globally. God, we pray that you would heal the land. We pray, God, that you would move and, and that you would do what only you're able to do. We know, God, that you are the healer. We know that you are the deliver, deliverer. And we know that you are a way maker. Have your way this day, this night. We plead the blood of Jesus over all of your people. We pray, God, that you will cover them, that you will guard them, that you will guide them, God, and that you will govern their hearts and their minds, that they don't panic nor fret, but they rest in your word tonight. We thank you, God, for what you're doing uh, even tonight, even as we come to the masses with your word tonight. Give us clarity, anoint us afresh, that we may speak forth, God, what you say in times like these. Bless us today. When God, we will humbly turn around and bless you and give your name the glory and all of the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you receive that today, just give the Lord a praise. Just uh, give him the glory right where you are. 
Once again, we welcome those that have just come on live with us. We see you coming on live. Uh, share it with your family. Share it with your friends. Amen. Tag somebody. However y'all do this thing. Amen. We're, we're new at it, but we're excited about what God is doing in these difficult and trying and challenging times that we're living in today. Well, once again, we welcome you, amen, to our Bible study tonight. We're coming from Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, verses 1 through 9. May you turn to Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, uh, verses 1 through 9. That is going to be our lesson tonight. Amen. Now, the subject of our lesson tonight is God's just servant. God's just servant, coming from Isaiah, uh, once again, the 42nd uh, chapter of Isaiah, uh, verses uh, 1 through verse 9. If you got it, amen, um, uh, just read along with me as we study this lesson. Now, before we get into this lesson, let me tell all my Bible uh, class and all those that follow us at CNBC that in this quarter, this entire quarter, uh, we're going to be dealing with and focusing on justice as presented in the scriptures. Uh, you know, justice in the scriptures is far different from the justice in the world that we uh, look at today. But when we look at justice presented in the scriptures, we're going to be looking at it justice in the scriptures from the prophets and in the reading of God's word. Uh, we know that the prophets uh, communicated God's will uh, to the people. They didn't speak what they want to say, but they communicated, they uh, articulated what God was saying to the people at that particular time. And what they were saying, unlike the prophets today, they were calling the people of God for repentance and justice or righteousness. They were calling for you to repent. And so this is what we're going to be dealing with on uh, this quarter that is coming up. Amen. Now, when we turn to Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, amen. Uh, the main thought we're going to be dealing with today is uh, uh, from that first verse, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighted. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. That's our unifying uh, uh, a thought uh, uh, for this week. But the unifying principle is going to be that we all as people, we're looking for a champion, someone to champion the cause of justice. And a lot of times we deal with a lot of unjust, we deal with a lot of uh, 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 inequality, and we look for a champion to come and champion that cause. And so when we look at this champion that God is presenting today, through the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah speaks a man, his vision in Isaiah 42, the vision and this champion, uh, this person that's going to champion the cause of justice is going to be none other than the Messiah, none other than the deliverer, none other, none other than the, the anointed one. Amen. And that is who this uh, champion that we are going to be looking at today. Now, when we... Uh, Look at this lesson tonight. I'm going to deal with basically three things. The three things I'm going to deal with today about this champion, that uh, this just, uh, uh, this just God's just servant is going to be a judge to the nation. God going to have a judge that will come and be a judge or bring justice to the nation. And then secondly, he is going to be a light to the nation, one that will come and illuminate and uh, give the very revelation uh, who God is. And then thirdly, it's going to be a hope for the nation. And this Messiah is going to be the hope for the nation. So if you have your Bibles with me, the first few verses that I want to read is uh, from that 42nd chapter, verses 1 through 4. Amen. I see some of those just joining us on Facebook Live. Amen. Once again, uh, those that are joining us, make sure you like this page. And make sure you share this page with your family and your friends. If you receive a blessing from this page, amen, like it and share it with your family and your friends. Well, in Isaiah 42, verses 1 through 4, let us read that today. Follow along with me. Open your Bibles. Open your Sunday school books. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, 
mine elect in whom my soul delighted. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment and truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged, hallelujah, till he have set forth judgment in the earth and the isles or the coast, uh, the, uh, the distant lands shall wait for his law. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that's the first thing I want to deal with here today, a judge to the nation. Now, before we get into this, I want to share with you who Isaiah is. Isaiah, uh, his name means salvation of the Lord, or Yahweh is salvation. Isaiah is, is probably a one, or if the greatest of the writing prophets. He had a vision of God and was called by God to do the work of God, bringing his nation to repentance in order that he may save it from the whirlpool of destruction. See, a lot of us want to be saved, but we don't want to do those things that will bring forth the salvation. And see, repentance and salvation go hand in hand. And so Isaiah, uh, when he brought this message, he came to the people with the message of judgment. But that message of judgment was tempered with hope. Even in the midst of uh, uh, um, what was going on, the um, injustice and things that were going on, God brought a message of, of judgment, but God tempered that message with a message of hope. Isaiah ministered for over 60 years or more and prophesied during the reign of five kings. You know these kings of Judah, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, and Manasseh. Isaiah pleaded with the people to turn from their wicked ways and back to a loving God who would forgive and restore them. Isaiah saw the deliverance of, of, of Jerusalem from her enemies, the Assyrians. So when we get into Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, when you go back to the 41st chapter, some things were going on. He opens up 40, the 41st chapter with the nations being challenged by God, who reminds them of his greatness, his power, his wisdom, and foreknowledge. That's in Isaiah 41 and 1. And that's more than 150 years before, you know, King Cyrus of Persia was even born. So when we get into Isaiah the 42nd chapter, if you read it with me again, Isaiah talks about a unique uh uh, servant, a unique servant. He says uh, in Isaiah 41, Behold my servant, talking about the Lord, talking about his servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighted. I have put my spirit upon him, and he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. These passages uh, uh, that Isaiah is talking about here today uh, is identifying the servant whom God have chosen to be the instrument of righteousness for his people. You know, the servant of the Lord ought to be an instrument uh, of the righteousness of God to the people. And this servant ought to be unique, unlike uh, the world servant. And so Isaiah talked about the uniqueness of the servant uh, when Isaiah said that uh, the servant is one in whom, uh, he says in, in this lesson, uh, my servant whom I uphold. And if you read it, Isaiah and Israel was waiting uh, this anointed servant. It's unlike the other servants that they had in the past. Uh, this servant is not the prophet, not Isaiah, but it, this is Israel long awaited Messiah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, this long-awaited Messiah, this servant is unique, I said, and he differs from an ordinary servant as humans understand it. 
His uniqueness is demonstrated in the series of qualifying or identifying attributes and the special relationship whom he has with the Lord God. In other words, this servant belongs to God. And the first of these designation, he says, whom I uphold. And what he means right there, it means that this servant, whom God, uh, 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 it says in the text, he upholds, it means that God is going to sustain or support him. Amen? In other words, he said, but God upholds his servant and causes him to be sustained. And the idea is that God will sustain and support him throughout his ministry. That means that when you are a servant of the Lord, this servant, God is going to uphold him. God is going to sustain him through the duration of his ministry. Through the duration of his work, God is going to be the one that is going to be sustaining him. And God is going to be the one that's going to support him and uphold him. The second uh, designation of the uniqueness of this servant, which is also one of honor, is that he is God's elect. My brothers and sisters, he is God elect or chosen one. It's translated from the Hebrew uh, word bakir. And this designation uh, carries the idea of being chosen with up, uh, ultimate and eternal significance. In other words, this is a divine choice that God made. In these verses, you see, I, you see the servant's calling. You see the servant's uh, character. You see the servant's commission to the nation. Amen. His calling is divine. His character, amen, is, is, is uh, one of righteousness. And his commission is not going to be just to uh, Jerusalem, uh, to the Jews, but his commission is going to be to the nations. In other words, he has a broader scope than what Israel thought of the Messiah. He is going to be a servant. He is divinely called, uh, divinely character, and he has a divine commission. Amen? Well, praise the Lord. Amen. In other words, another thing he says, he says, the chosen one is also the one in whom God delights in. In other words, the phrase, my soul delights, speaks of being deeply pleased or passionately uh, delighted with. Amen? Amen. This delight involves the whole being. It is not a one-time event as the verb might suggest. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, rather, God continues to have pleasure in his servant. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. And speaking on two occasions, we know uh, in the New Testament, the Lord says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. In Matthew 3 and 17 and also in Matthew 17 and 5. Notice the servant, the speaker says he has been, uh, uh, he has been endued or endowed. He's put his spirit upon him. And that, my brother and sister, the phrase, my spirit, definitely refers to the Holy Spirit. In other words, he has been anointed. He is the anointed one of God. And when you are anointed of God, you have been equipped, amen, to do the work uh, 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 to the people to accomplish the given task. The anointing was upon him and the, the anointing is simply the ability to get the job done. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This anointed one was anointed by man. He wasn't anointed by people laying their hands upon him or putting all on him. He was anointed by God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice, Jesus testified of being filled with the Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, for his work of deliverance, healing, and preaching, and the good news. Remember in Isaiah, the 61st chapter, when he said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he have anointed me. Amen. To do these things. And this prophecy is fulfilled in the New Testament during the baptism of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the Gospel of Matthew 6, 18 through 17, also in Luke and John, amen, amen. Remember John baptized and testified concerning Jesus, amen. But then he saw the spirit when he baptized Jesus, amen, descended up from heaven upon him in the form of a dove. And, and it, it abode on him 
And the Lord says, Amen. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Amen. Here the Lord says, I have put my spirit upon him, signifies a completed action which shows that even before it was manifested, it was indeed, amen, before the prophet it, prophecy is revealed, amen, to the prophet, the Lord had already been equipped, uh, the, the equipped to serve, amen, for the task, amen, which he was called to fulfill by the Holy Ghost, amen. And so this servant that the Lord, amen, is going to uphold, amen, and uh, he's going to sustain, he was un uniquely equipped, amen, even before he was born. Amen. What a savior we have today. Amen. He was equipped from eternity. Amen. It's, it's specifically a sign mission to bring judgment to the Gentiles. Amen. So the text says, amen. Uh, uh, this is a man. He is going to be a judge to the nation. Amen. Amen. He was endowed with the Holy Spirit. He's going to bring true justice. Amen. Uh, to the nation. Amen. And uh, you use the word judgment or justice. Amen. It is a, it's a synonym with the law. Amen. And so, amen. He is going to be a judge to the nation. Hallelujah. Amen. He talks about the character of the servant. In verse 2, he shall not cry nor lift up nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break and the smoking flax shall not he shall not quench. He shall bring forth judgment and truth. Now, we're talking about a man, uh, God's uh, uh, servant. Amen. God's just servant. Amen. Uh, Isaiah prophesies when he prophesies in verse 2. Amen. Uh, this prophecy identifies the manner or the character in which the servant will fulfill his mission. Notice what he says. He would not fulfill his mission. Uh, uh, he would do it unassumingly. Amen. Uh, unpretentiously. Amen. In verse 2, the fact is, presented here in verse 2, uh, with three negative verbs, if you read verse 3, notice what it says, he shall not cry, he shall not lift up, and he shall not cause his voice to be heard in the street. All this describes the quiet manner in which the servant will carry out his task. These these phases are synonymous. The servant's demeanor will, different, will differ from that of an ordinary person, such as the merchant who goes out and advertise and uh, campaigns and sh shout his wares with a loud voice in the street. Uh, as a teacher, he will speak with quietness and calmness. As a prophet, he would not pro proclaim his message with a loud voice or with sensationalism. Now, that throw a lot of us, amen, um, throw a lot of us out of the running right here because we try to be sensational every time we do things. Uh, uh, but we just got to speak the word of God and share the word of God and let God do the rest. Hallelujah. Amen. I know I got a witness on that today. Neither will he present his message, uh, uh, you know, argumentatively. You know, he won't be arguing the his point. He would not strive, amen. In Matthew 12 and 19, he says, nor would he push his teaching down the throat of the people. He does not need to do this because the Holy Spirit is the one who will convince them. It's not me. It's the Holy Spirit that will convince, that will convict. It's the Holy Spirit that will reprove, amen. It's the Holy Spirit that will draw them to the truth of God and to the word of God. I wish I had a witness here today, amen. I know somebody here knows what I'm talking about here today, amen. So if we're going to be servants of the Lord, then we got to emulate these things, amen. We just, um, we got to look to um, uh, emulate how God, uh, 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 how this character is, amen, and what we do. Notice he does it with a modesty, in the quiet manner in which he carries out uh, his mission is also reflected in his attitude toward uh, and treatment of the weak. This is graphically ex expressed in the image he used of the reed and the smoking flax or the lamp wick. Amen. Uh, and so he deals with all these things. See the character of it. He does it with uh, humility. 
He does it with compassion. Uh, he doesn't uh, do it flamboyantly with uh, sensationalism, but he goes about the work of God and the mission he was on with humility and compassion uh, for those that are weak and those that are downtrodden. Amen. Now, verse 4 says, he shall not fail nor be discouraged. Amen. You know, when you're a servant of the Lord, when God is with you, when God has anointed you, you, amen, you would not fail and you would not be discouraged because it's the Lord that is holding you up. Hallelujah. It is the Lord that is holding you up. It is the Lord that is sustaining you. Amen. It is the Lord that's going to be with you, be with you until you come to the completion of what God have called you to do. Just simply means, as Jesus said, and lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of, it, of this age or this world. How many know that the Lord will see you through? And I'm going to share with you here right now. I know I'm teaching right now, but I'm going to share with you in the, uh, amen, in my listening audience that God is with you right now. Amen. His anointing is upon you right now. He is going to empower you to do what you need to do to get through what you're going through right now. Amen. God is going to hold you up when you can't hold yourself up. Amen. Amen. He is going to be with you always, even until the end of this age. So be encouraged in the Lord today. Amen. Now, verse 4 says, He should not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth and the isle of those in a distant land shall wait for his law. Amen. Now, the first part of this verse is a play on words uh, using the Hebrew metaphors from the previous verse. He shall not fail. Also meaning uh, to grow dim, recalling the dim, failing, smoking flax from the previous verse, uh, nor will he be discouraged. Also meaning to be crushed or bruised. Recall, recalling in verse uh, three, the bruised read from the previous verse, affirming this fact that the servant will not fail or be discouraged, it implies that the ministry of the servant, it ain't going to be easy. He's going to encounter difficulties and resistance. This is expressly prophesied, amen, of him uh, that he was wounded for our transgression and he was bruised for our iniquities. But however, he will never grow weary or faint nor will he be discouraged, but he will continue conscientiously until he accomplishly accomplishes his task, until he establishes in this earth the setting of judgment is his act of salvation, and it is not restricted to the Jewish people only, but it is universal and include both Jews and Gentiles. I have other sheep that are not of this fold. Thank God that he said, I must need to go through Samaria. In the Gospel of John, the fourth chapter, he must need to go through Samaria. And that's why he had to send the other disciples, amen, uh, away for him while he go through Samaria. Amen. Because they wouldn't understand the need to go through Samaria. Amen. Now, he says this, he's, he, he, amen, he is going to uh, uh, not be discouraged. He will not uh, 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 fail in all that God have called him to do. Amen. And God is calling him to be a judge or bring justice to the nation. And that is not to just the Jews, uh, Israel or Judah. It is to all of the nation. Amen. Praise the Lord. What well, we're talking about God's just servant. If you just tune in, amen. And the first part of this lesson in, the, in Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, verses 1 through 9, verses 1 through 4, uh, we're dealing with a judge to the nation. Now, when you get into uh, verses 5, 6, and uh, 7, amen, we're going to be dealing with a light for the nation, a judge, amen, to the nation, and now a light for the nation. And verse 5, 6, and 7, amen. Let us read that together to my Bible study that, that are here with us tonight. And 6 and 7, uh, 5, 6, and 7, Thus saith the God, the Lord, thus saith God, the Lord, He that created the heaven and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and His Spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, 
I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will uphold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentile to open the blinded eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison and to them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know you read that along with us today. Amen. Now, a light to the nation in Isaiah 5 through 7. Isaiah writes that uh, this is God, the one who made the heaven and the earth and all aspect of creation. The Bible says the earth is the Lord. Amen. And the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Amen. It all belonged to him because he created. In the beginning, God created. And then in John uh, 1 and 1, says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. The Word was with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. God made it all. And so Isaiah writes that this is God, the one who made the heavens and the earth and all aspects of creation. Isaiah takes his declaration from Genesis 1, where the scripture affirmed that God did not only put his seal of approval upon all creation, but also put his spirit into human beings, amen, so that they might be in the image and in the likeness of God. Amen. Now notice he says his servant uh, would bring uh, light to the Gentiles, amen. Despite their rebellion, uh, God still loved them, amen. Despite everything that they have done, amen, uh, God is still going to bring light to the Gentile. He loves his people, and he sent his servant to bring them back to him. At the same time, God loved the Gentiles. He loved Israel, but there's something where Israel kind of got, had a limited scope uh, of the salvation of the Lord. God so loved the world, not just the Jews, uh, not just us, but God loves the world. Amen. He has an unlimited scope of his love. Amen. And so Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of these prophecies. Amen. Uh, 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 Jesus came so that we might, uh, amen, have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Amen. Uh, the Bible says in the Gospel of John, the first chapter, in him was life, and that life lighted every man that cometh in the world, and the light shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Amen. Praise the Lord. So he said he's going to be a light. Amen. The prophet, again, introduces the one who sends his servant. This is God. And with the introduction, directs our attention to God, who is about to speak directly to the servant to confirm his calling. The prophet appeals to the persons of God as the creator and sustainer of all things. He is the one who created and stretched out the heavens who spread forth the earth and everything in it. Amen. Notice what he says here uh, in verse 6. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and I will uphold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant uh, of the people for a light of the Gentile. Now the Lord identifies himself as the speaker. I, the Lord, in this verse, it's a singular personal pronoun, I. It, actually, it is actually rare to find a pronoun standing alone as the subject of a Hebrew sentence. It is used here to emphasize, uh, to establish the authority of the calling and to assure the servant of the identity of the one who is behind the calling. He is the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's when you, you sure of your calling, amen. And the servant is sure of his calling because it is the Lord God that called him, amen. It is the Lord God. It's a, it's a divine call, amen. This is the Messiah, amen. Israel may be looking for uh, justice in other places, amen, and other uh, avenues and other ways, but true justice only come from God. Hallelujah, amen. God is the only one who can bring justice, amen. And so he speaks this, amen, uh, and he says, uh, he is the Lord, the covenant-keeping God of Israel, the one who is faithful to keep his promises and never fails. Amen. Uh, with such a God behind him, the servant cannot fail or be discouraged, as he said in verse 4, even in the face 
of ob obstacles and even in the face of resistance, this servant, amen, is not going to fail. Praise the Lord. Notice, this call is made in righteousness. His mission uh, will have its foundation in God's righteousness. Amen. And uh, in other words, the word righteousness in Hebrew, amen, uh, means what is right, what is just, amen, normal or standard. It is also translated as justice or equity. Amen. That's his mission. He's a mission to establish God's righteousness. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Notice, therefore, uh, in this attribute has the servant been called, and in it he will accomplish the mandate of his calling. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, this will be manifest in itself in the salvation of those who yield to him and punish for those, punishment to those who reject him. Amen. It's going to be established. Amen. Now, you know, Jer Jeremiah prophesied concerning him. He told, told us in Jeremiah uh, 23 verses 5 through 6 and 33 and 16. He said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise up unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Not only has God called him in righteousness, but he has also he also hold his servant's hand and keep him. Amen. Notice in the phrase it says, I, I will hold thine hand is similar in the meaning to I'm going to, uh, whom I uphold in verse one, which means that the Lord will do what he's going to sustain him. He's going to uphold him. It again calls attention to the fact that the task of the servant is not going to be an easy one. Hence the Lord reaffirms his commitment with the phrase, and will keep thee. God will more than hold his servant hand. God will not let go of it. Praise the Lord. God is going to do more than hold the servant's hand. He ain't going to let go. And how many know that when you got your hand in God's hand, amen, we may let go, but God will never let go. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus, I'm in the Father's hand and you in my hand, and I'm not going to let you go. No man can pluck you out. Praise the Lord. I'm, 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 I, I, I am confident and I'm sure of my salvation. Praise the Lord. Amen. Notice, this signifies that the Lord will guide and protect the Messiah as, as a man guides and protects his child when he holds him by his hand. Amen. Verse 7 talks about an imperative. Amen. It, be, it begins with an imperative. Amen. To open the blind eyes in verse 7. I, I know you got that. Amen. You still got your Bibles open and follow along with me. Those who are just coming online, amen. We're talking about God's just servant, amen, or seeking a champion for justice, amen. I'm using a unifying topic, uh, God's just servant, amen. We talk about this servant is, is none other than the Messiah, and none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the anointed one, amen, the, the deliverer, amen. That's who it is. He's unlike any other servant, amen. He brings true justice bring true righteousness. Amen. He's not coming with a limited uh, scope. He's coming with an unlimited scope. Amen. God so loved the world. Whosoever will, let them come. Amen. And that's what God is calling today. Amen. I, I shared in the beginning, amen, in this time we're dealing with, amen, let us not step back from mi ministry. Amen. We have an unlimited scope. And sometimes as a church body, we get limited. We just deal with our people and our group. Amen. But God, amen, there's a whole lot of sinners out there, amen, that God have already, amen, given us uh, charge and anointed us to go out there and share them with them. Amen. The uh, inerrant, uh, uh, you know, the, the power of God's word and his righteousness. We have that power to do that right now. Every anointed saint, every anointed teacher, preacher, amen, leader, amen, we have the power to share with them the glorious good news, and we see the calling, the character, we see the commission in these texts, amen, and God going to be with us, God going to uphold this servant, amen, and if God did it for Jesus, he'll do it for us, to all of us that are anointed today. Jesus said, greater things you will do, amen, and so I believe in the greater things, amen, and God has done greater things even in dark times like this. God is still moving and God just needs some people of God that believe in the word of God, that believe in the power of God, that believe in the promises of God, that God is going to uphold you. God is not going to let you down. God is going to sustain you. God is going to lift you up even in the difficult times as we talked about in this servant. Even though God's going to uphold him, amen, God's going to uphold him because the times are going to be hard. Resistance is going to be there. 
But yet, through it all, God is going to see us through. Amen. I'm going to share with you here right now. Amen. God is going to see us through, and God is seeing you through even right now. And you can shout right now that your home is covered, that your family is covered, that you're covered today, that you have the word of God. Amen. And this is a prophet. This is a servant unlike any other servant. He's a unique servant because he was divinely called and equipped. Amen. And has his assignment before he ever was born or came to the earth. Amen. It was in the, uh, amen. It was, it was already established in the heavens. Amen. What he was going to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's somebody shouting on that right now. Let me get back to my lesson. Amen. And so we talked about uh, this uh, uh, imperative in verse 7. To open blind eyes and to bring out the prisoners from the prison and to them that sat in darkness out of the prison house. Amen. Powerful. That's a powerful verse right there. Amen. It's imperative. This verse begins with imperative to open. To open. The purpose of the servant mission uh, which is uh, uh, idiomatically expressed in these previous verses is now made explicit. Although in different figurative terms, to open the blind eyes does not mean only uh, healing of those who are physically blind. Although we know Jesus did that, you know, he came and, you know, he a blind Bartimaeus, put on the ground. Everybody know all that. Amen. He did those things. Uh, uh, but amen. Uh, Jesus did that during his ministry, but it also refers to those blind because of sin. Those who reject the love relationship the Lord have offered to them, all sinners are blind because of sin. Amen. That's what the amazing grace is uh, is all about. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound to save the wretch, wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Praise the Lord. That 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 is the mission. Uh, that's the imperative. Amen. Of this. Um, just servant that God is uh, sending, amen. His God's just servant, amen. He is, he has an imperative, amen. Uh, uh, and his imperative, amen, is to open blind eyes. Those that have been blinded by sin, he is to open up the blinded eyes. Hallelujah, amen. And this is the imperative that he's talking about. It's, it includes both Jews and Gentiles, amen. Uh, therefore, the task of the Messiah was called to be the light, is to open their eyes and deliver them from the darkness of sin. You know, the Jews thought they was in the light, but yet they was, uh, they were, they rejected the light. Amen. He came to his own. The Bible said, the own received him not. Amen. But as many as received him, to them he gave power, authority, become sons of God, children of God, even to them that believed on his name. Praise the Lord for the light. I saw the light one day. I was walking in darkness, but God, the light of God, amen, amen, shined upon me. And I, re I accepted, amen, what God offered me on behalf of my sin, the Messiah, amen, my Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, we know, amen, uh, uh, the, uh, the same idea applies to the next two phrases. God literally sets captives free. In addition to this, uh, those who without the foreknowledge of God are in bondage to sin and darkness. Amen. Not only are we blind by sin, but amen, sin has a, late, a way of not only putting us uh, 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 in uh, darkness, but it has a way of uh, uh, putting us in prison, amen, putting us in bondage. And seeing Jesus came to break that yoke, amen. Jesus came to uh, 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 set us free out of the prisons, amen, amen, they, amen. Uh, uh, and the good news is today, amen, uh, those without the knowledge of God are in bondage to sin and darkness, and they, and they need to be liberated. And the good news, they cannot liberate themselves. You can't set yourself free. And so, therefore, they need a deliverer not as a warrior, but one who comes as God's righteousness to impart God's love and righteousness to them. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that's a light to the Gentile, not only to the Gentile, but a light to the nation. Amen. A light to the nation. Amen. Not just to the Jews. Amen. Not to uh, the Gentile. It's a light to the nation. And the imperative was, amen, that he's coming. He says he's going to bring out of the prisoners 
Amen. From the prison and to them that sat in darkness out of the prison house. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Thank God for this imperative that he have that this mission uh, that God's just servant has. Amen. Now, let us get to verse 8 and 9 as we come to a conclusion of my lesson. Thank you all for joining us tonight. For those who just get online, praise the Lord. We pray that you are tagging, that you are sharing with your family and your friends. Amen. And, and, and we are excited that you're on board with us today, that you are safe, uh, that you're healthy. Amen. And that you're at home. Amen. But stay strong in the faith. Stay strong in the confidence. As I said earlier, continue to minister, continue to share the love of God and be a good testimony, a good witness about uh, of the power of God in these difficult and dark times. Amen. We have God just serving. He is a light. He's going to lighten up your situation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's turn to verse 8 and 9. Isaiah 42, verse 8 and 9. You got it? Say, I got it. I can't hear you, but I know that you got it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse 8 and 9 says, I am the Lord. This is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to a graven image. We're talking about carved idols and things like that, things that man like to uh, uh, celebrate and lift up and set up on high, amen, and, and pay homage to, amen. God, so he don't share his glory with, with uh, his praise with any graven or carved image. Then verse 9, I love this, and, 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 and I know CNBC, y'all know that I love this verse, verse 9, amen. Behold, the former things are come to pass. And new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Now let me read you what the uh, NLT says in verse 9. Everything I prophesied have come true. The former things have come to pass. I've done that. I fulfill that. But now he's saying, and now I will prophesy again. In other words, I'm going to give you a new prophecy. And he says, I will tell you the future before it happens. Before I do it, I'm going to tell you about it. Oh, hallelujah. That's just some good news today. Let me just stop before I get into those verses. That good news today that when you're really connected to God, God will let you know what he's going to do before he does it. Amen. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. God is yet speaking today uh, to the church. I know we listen to everybody and uh uh, about what's going on and things like that. But God needs the people of God to fall on their knees, call on him, and let God speak to you today right where you are. He is a God. He's not too far that uh, he can't hear you. Amen. You can call on him right now. Jeremiah said, if you call, he said, I will answer. And I'll show you great and I'll show you mighty things. Hallelujah. How many of y'all believe that today? Amen. Praise the Lord. I know that you received that today. Well, as we get into this uh, last uh, few verses, amen, uh, we're dealing with, amen, we're dealing with a hope for the nation. We talked about the judge to the nation. We talk about a light to the nation. No, we didn't talk, not just talk about the Jews. He's going to be a judge, not to the, just to the Jews, but he's going to bring justice to the Jews and the Gentiles. He's not just going to be a light to uh, the Jews, but he's going to be a light to the nations. Now, he's not just bringing hope to the Jews, but yeah, he's bringing hope to the Jews, but it's going to be hope to the nations as well. And those Bible readers and Bibles who study the Bible know that uh, when you study in prophecy, there's near view and then there's far view. Near view, God will speak to you right where you are, what you're dealing with right there. Amen. As God spoke to Israel right where they were, what they were dealing with. Amen. But then he talked about the far view because he's talking about the real deliverer. It's going to come. It's going to be uh, years down the road. So what, 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 is it, what is the purpose of prophecy? So God, God will let you know what he's going to do before he do it because it gives you hope. It gives you faith. It gives you confidence because if he says the old things have come to pass or he says the old things I have fulfilled, you know whatever God promised that he's able to fulfill because he have already done it in time past and he's going to do it again. Praise the Lord. And so I know, amen, that God is still in control because everything that he spoke have come true and he's still speaking today. Hallelujah. How many of y'all believe that today? God is still speaking today. Well, let's get to these verses right here. Amen. Hope for the nation. In verse uh, 8, he says, I am the Lord. Amen. I am the Lord. This is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven image. Again, the Lord identifies himself as Yahweh. Amen. The Lord. 
when he did, when he uh, identifies himself, he's saying that I am the covenant keeping God of Israel. I don't break my covenant. I don't break my word. I keep my word. I keep my covenant. Uh, amen. With my people. Amen. What he's saying, he, he's saying that I am the covenant keeping God of Israel, the eternal and self existing God. Amen. Nobody holds me up. Amen. I'm a self existing God. Amen. The phrase, I am the Lord, amen, uh, does not merely identify who he is. It reassures the servant of the power and authority behind that name. How many know there's power in the name of the Lord? Amen. It's the power behind that name, and it emphasizes his faithfulness. Amen. It is the same name used uh, when he revealed himself to Moses. Amen. In Exodus, the third chapter, I am that I am. In Exodus, the sixth chapter and three. A name that reflects his nature, the unchanging and sovereign God who forever stands by his word. Amen. He is, a, he is the unchanging and sovereign God. Amen. Who stands by his word. Amen. I love that today. And what we need today, my brothers and sisters, we need a word from the Lord. We don't need all the people speaking and everybody shouting and everybody uh, say, God told me to tell you. We need a word from God. Amen. A genuine, authentic word of God. Amen. And God is yet speaking today. He just needs some people to call on him. Amen. The people of God. Amen. And so he says, amen. It gives us, amen. This phrase, uh, that is my name, adds a further emphasis to the assurance he has given to the servant. Amen. This assurance of God's faithfulness is keeping his promises is further stated in the last two phrases of this verse, which are synonymous my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. God don't share his glory nor his praise to all these graven images. You're going to fall down and, and uh, uh, at the uh, uh, cross and all those other kind of things, amen, uh, are things that we made, amen. We don't need to wear our cross, we need to bear our cross. I wish I had some help here today. Amen. And so this is, this is to say that what I promise, I will perform. I'm the Lord. That's my name. Amen. He will not let the servant down. You can guarantee it. Amen. You can believe it because this is my name. Amen. Uh, and that's the great assurance we have today. Uh, uh, letting him down or failing him is tantamount to letting Satan take the essence of his being or his glory, and letting the praise that belong to God be taken by idols. God ain't going to let you down because God ain't give, amen, you know, Satan wants to praise. He wants us to worship him, but God ain't going to let the servant down because, amen, he ain't going to give, he don't share his glory with nobody, nor praises to any graven or carved images. Amen. God will see you through. Amen. Notice what it says. Worship and praise belongs to God, only God. And therefore must not be given to any creature, neither human beings, nor man-made graven images, nor Satan. Now we need to, the people of God need to re re be reminded of this from time to time. Sometimes we praise people, we praise uh, teams, we praise uh, other things, but we need to give all the praise and all the glory to nobody but God. Because he, he alone is worthy of the praise. He alone is worthy of all the glory. And we ought to magnify the Lord, amen, in the beauty of his holiness, amen. And we ought to give God all the praise and all the glory, amen. And so God identifies this, amen. And, uh, and then he goes on to say, amen, uh, in the verse 9, the, uh, the following statement in verse 9, further strengthens the certainty that the Lord, that all that the Lord had promised will definitely be fulfilled. What certainty do we have? Well, uh, the old things have come to pass. And he's getting ready to do a new thing. Amen. If you read in verse 9, he just told us in verse 9, amen. Uh, Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Notice in the text, amen. God says we can be assured in what he says he's going to do because what he said he's going to do it's already done. Amen. He already done that. Amen. Now he's getting ready to do something new. And before he do them, he says to the people of God, you're going to know about it. 
shall you not know them? And whatever I do, another text says, amen, can't nobody hinder, can't nobody let, can't nobody stop. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is God doing. We talked about the character of God's just servant. We talked we talk about the call of God's just servant. We talked about the character of God's just servant. And now we talk about the commission of God's uh, just servant. We talk about how he's going to be a judge to the nation. How he's going to be a light to the nation. Amen. And now we talk about the hope of the nation. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Just simply saying, my brother and sister, I hope ain't built on all uh, the stuff we're looking for right now. And I know we're praying, we're praising God because we know that he has the answer to what we're going through right now. But really, our hope is in the Lord. Because everything he said he will do, he has done. And the things he says he's going to do, it will be done because he was faithful. And he, he's a covenant-keeping God. He's already done it. And we know that he's going to bring this to to pass. Amen. So as we close the speaker in verse nine uh, of this utterance, uh, he speaks that, that the speaker talks about the form of things that have been fulfilled, which indicate that the new things or the present prediction he will uh, that he is making uh, will also be fulfilled or will come to pass. So the form of things he talked about will be fulfilled. They've been fulfilled. And so we can be equally assured that the things he says he's going to do, it's already done. I say oftentimes, uh, 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 when, God, when God speaks, amen, uh, uh, he's looking back because to him it's already done. We're looking forward to it to be done. But we got the faith and the confidence because he have already done it in the past. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So as we close, amen, the, the prophet inspired by the Holy Spirit recalls the faithfulness of God and keeping his word and promises in the past. He reassures the people of the certain fulfillment of the present prediction, and he reminds them that God is to be fully trusted. The certainty and assurance of these prophecies are further strengthened with the following phrase, before they spring forth, I'll, I tell you of them. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. These predictions and promises will spring forth. They will be fulfilled. It's like a seed uh, uh, in the ground. At first, when the seed go down, you can't see it. They would eventually germinate and Israel will remember them and honor the Lord. Confident in the faithfulness of the Lord to keep his promises even before they spring forth. Isaiah called on the people, both Jews and Gentiles, all who bear this prophecy, all who hear this prophecy, indeed the whole earth to start celebrating and singing a new song of the Lord. That's in verse 10, not in our lesson, but he, amen. If you receive that today, he said, if, if you receive that, if you believe it, if you got confidence in that, he said, you ought to break forth and start singing and shouting and praising God. I'm believing that there's still the bomb in Gilead. I'm, I'm believing that God is still yet here, that God is still yet working behind the scene. I'm believing that the promise of God is yea, yea, and amen. I believe that whatever he promised, that he's able to fulfill. Somebody said a long time ago, the promises of God are the spoken future deposited in our present that causes us to overcome our past. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God said he'll send a savior. God said he'll send us a, uh, a just servant. Well, he did that in the person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He came to seek and to save those which were lost. He came to heal the sick and to raise the dead. Ultimately, he came, amen, to, to redeem man and bring them back, back into right relationship with God. On a hill called Calvary, Jesus died for all of our sin. Amen. Thank God today. He didn't stay dead. Everybody know that early Sunday morning, he got up out of the grave with all power of heaven and earth in his hand. Thank God today that what he said he's going to do, he's already done it. It's been fulfilled. And now the, the things that yet will, that will be fulfilled, I'm holding and I'm trusting and I'm believing in God that God is going to do what only he said he's able to do. Praise the Lord. Somebody shouting right now. Somebody believing that. Somebody receiving that today. I thank God today 
for God's just servant, amen. The champion, God's champion of justice is nobody but Jesus Christ. But listen here today, amen. God anoints us today to stand up for righteousness. Amen. God anoint us today to stand up. Amen. The same way Jesus did. Not just, amen, uh, 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 not trying to be in, uh, uh, in sensationalism or to be out there to not horn. Amen. In your walk, in your talk. Amen. Lift him up. Amen. Be a witness. Amen. Look out for the weak. Amen. Call somebody up and, 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 and share with them the love of God. Let them know that God is still in control. Let them know that God is still moving. Amen. In the midst of everything we're going through right now, don't step back. God needs for the people of God to stand up because the world is looking, amen, for, for, for a standard. The world today is looking for a word. The world today is looking for light in the midst of the darkness, amen. And thank God today, we who God have called out of darkness into the marvelous light, amen. We can stand up and be a witness and say, I know a man. Amen. From Galilee. Amen. If you're in sin, he can definitely set you free. Amen. Let me, amen, get back. Amen. I'm getting ready to preach now. Amen. We're so blessed to have you all with us here today. Amen. I'm excited uh, for this opportunity we have uh, in the midst of um, darkness and the midst of a difficult situation. Amen. To the people of God, I want to share with you that God, amen, is with you. He will never leave you. Amen. He understands what you're going through. Amen. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Whatever you do, don't step back, stand forward. Amen. Uh, call on his name. Amen. He said, if you call, I will answer. Amen. If you call him, amen, and share, amen, your concerns with him. Amen. Cast your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Our prayers are with your family. Our prayers are with your loved ones. Our prayers is with your home, your family, that God will cover your house, God will cover your family, and that can't nobody protect you like the Lord can protect you. He has sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of God, uh, to the redemption of the purchased possession. I believe that today I receive that today. I love you with the love of God. Our prayers are with you. CMBC family, amen. Tag, share with somebody, share with your family, your friends, amen. Thank my pastors uh, who are online, those who uh, have commented, those who have called me and told me they enjoyed it. Thank you. Amen. To all of our seasoned saints, we pray that uh, a loved one, amen, uh, family member, grandchild or somebody, uh, show you how to hook it up, amen, so you can receive this. If not, uh, check us on, on YouTube, amen, immediately following uh, this broadcast. Once again, we love you. We'll close with a word of prayer. God, our Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you. We bless you once again for your just servant. Thank you, God, for his divine calling. Thank you, God, for the character, God. Thank you, God, for his commission. Now, Lord, we know that he is a judge to the nation. He is a light to the nation. And he is a hope for the nation. We pray today, God, that you will bless each and every member of CNBC. Cover us in your love. Touch those that are sick, those that are feeble. Touch those who need you right now. Lord, we pray for this nation. We pray for this globe. We pray, pray God, for not just America, God. We pray for every nation that is dealing with this pandemic right now. Send your glory in the midst of this. Give wisdom and knowledge to the, all the doctors and all those who scientists who are looking for a cure. We pray your blessing upon the families, God, who have lost loved ones through this pandemic, through this virus. We pray that you'll cover, Lord, the uh, first responders and those who are out there on the front lines. Protect them. Protect their families, God. Cover them. Strengthen them. and Let them know, God, that uh, you're going to uphold them. You're going to sustain them. You're going to keep them. Thank you once again that we're able to, God, to share your word, to share your love, to pray and call on your name. Lord, through the uh, vehicle and through uh, this medium of uh, Facebook Live. Bless us today that we continue to serve you and give a name the glory and the praise. We love you, Lord God. We bless you and we thank you. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, thank you for being with us today. Uh, share this with your um, uh, tag and then share it with your family, your friends, your loved ones. Amen. I want to 
uh, just send a blessing of God upon each and every one of you to your homes and your families. Amen. Be blessed today. Remember, be safe, stay safe, stay healthy. Amen. Stay home and stay strong. I love you with the love of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you receive that, just tell God thank you. God bless you. Amen.